What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, my name is Akeem Haynes. I'm a two-time Olympian, Olympic bronze medalist, author, motivational speaker, and sports commentator. On my channel, we talk boxing, MMA, track and field, and of course, motivation and encouraging content. If this is something that you enjoy, then I hope that you subscribe to the channel. Now, let's get into the video. Emil Carr versus Elijah Garcia. This is on the Figueroa versus Mike Sayo on the card. Let's get into it. Let's start with Vidal. 16 wins, zero losses, 12 wins by way of knockout. Since he turned professional in 2018, he's been pretty active and consistent over the years. A few years before that, in 2016, I remember reading an article that he was in an accident that forced him to need surgery. And then a lot of doctors were telling him, you know, you're not going to be able to walk again. So that already kind of tells me and shows me the level of toughness and mindset that he has, not just in the boxing ring, but in life, period. And he seems to have carried that over to the ring also. So in 2018, he fought six times, right? So it's a, a lot of times fighting, especially in this era of boxing. Most of those was in his home country of Uruguay. He won all those fights by knockout or some form of stoppage. 2019, he fights four more times. Three of those wins are by way of some form of stoppage. 2019 was the first time that I actually started hearing about his name. You know, when you're on this side of the world, you don't always get to hear what is happening in other parts of the world as much. His first fight in America was when I got a chance to kind of see him live right on paper it says he's six foot tall but step inside the ring he looks a little bit taller to me and his reach is long as well too and he looks big in there solid 160 pounder right so that fight starts out and you see his patience you see his accuracy you see the body work that he's been putting forward his opponent missed with a hook vidal caught him with the right hand and hooked him with the left and closed out the show it happened so quickly and i didn't think that he had that type of explosiveness and split aggressiveness and be able to make a shift on a dime like that, not to mention the power that came with it and how he finished out the fight when his opponents was hurt. I wouldn't say I was a believer in him just yet, but it definitely made me want to see more of him moving forward. After that fight, he goes on to fight Leopoldo Reyna and Edward Ortiz, and he stops them both in under three rounds. But then... He gets into the ring with Emmanuel Alim, who was more experienced. He was confident and had strength in his own right. Alim took the fight to Vidal. I mean, he was letting his hands go early. He was sticking. He was moving. He was landing good quality shots. But so was Vidal, right? Vidal wasn't backing down. He was fighting back, landing uppercuts and body shots from close range. It was an exciting fight for 10 rounds. Alim was tough man that was the best that i've ever seen him fight inside the ring and but the reason why i say it's tough is because i remember in that sixth round he got hit with a body shot that was loud sounded like a thunderclap and i was thinking to myself man that would have dropped a lot of other boxers right even the top guys in the division it was a punishing shot but he stood the test survived the round went back in the next round and went back to doing work. And Aleem was the busier fighter, whereas Vidal landed the more visible eye-catching shots, especially to the body. The only thing that bothered me in that fight with Vidal was he was just throwing one shot at a time, right? When he put together combinations and flurries, he was having success. But then he would go back to just hitting you one time and just relying too much on the power shots. And Aleem took advantage of that by letting his hands go with any more combinations and using his footwork to get out of the way. It was a very good fight by Aleem. Now, Vidal got the win by majority decision. But I thought it was a draw, in my opinion. Nonetheless, I think that was a fight that Vidal needed, right? He needed a tough fight. He needed a grueling fight. He needed a fight with someone who was not going to back down because those are the fights that you learn the most and it makes you better and it makes you improve. Now, last year he fought twice and he won both of those fights. But his recent fights against Omar Diaz, where he fought him back in Uruguay, honestly... I wasn't too impressed with that fight. I thought he fought down to his opponent's level, 
right? I he didn't look like he didn't look like he seemed very excited for that fight. It looked like he was just comfortable with doing what he needed to do to win the fight. He was in more of a countering boxing state of mind rather than the normal offensive aggression that we are used to from seeing from him. However, defensively, though, he looked pretty solid. He looked better in that fight. He was moving the head a lot more. His footwork looked like it improved as well. So, you know, maybe he was just working on some things, working on some of the stuff that his trainer was teaching him in the gym this weekend. He can't afford to have that same fight because he is up against a young undefeated fighter in Elijah Garcia who is hungry and is looking to add Vidal to his winning resume. Let's talk about his opponent, Elijah Garcia. 13 wins, no losses, 11 wins by way of knockout. This young man turned pro in 2020. But you look at his record, he's got 13 fights already. So you know that he has been busy. He's been fight ready. He's been fight sharp. He's ready right now because of his activity over the recent years. He fought four times last year, won three of them by stoppage. This young man, he is solid right? He's a come forward type of fighter. He's a southpaw. So that can be tricky for natural orthodox fighters. He's aggressive, but he's defensively responsible, has good head movement. And you can see he's well coached with a good, solid foundation. He might be young on paper, but he's poised in the ring, crafty with his approach. He'll take his time early to figure out his attack. He isn't going to really be in a rush. He'll bide his time as the fight goes on before really opening up and letting the hands go. And it may not look like when he throws that he's landing it with pop, but man has 11 wins and 13 fights. So you know he can crack. You know he's got pop in his shots. He's a good body puncher who likes to fight on the inside and keep everything right in front of him. I like what I've seen of him so far. In his last fight against Cruz Stewart, you can turn on that tape and see a knockout was ready to come at any moment. Stewart got sucked into fighting Garcia's close range pocket fight. With his reach, his youth, and his size, he was going to win that bout, in my opinion. Garcia was landing too cleanly, landing too consistently for Stewart to really stand a chance. But this is going to be a test for him. And I credit the young man, especially this early in his career, to take a fight like this one against Vidal, who can punch, who is strong, who is experienced, and who has never been knocked down before in his career. This is a true test, and it's going to be a very good fight. So who wins? As much as I like Garcia, man, to me, I think Vidal has fought the better competition. He's fought the bigger punchers, and he's been tested a little bit more than Garcia has. I think the experience in this one will make a tough fight for Garcia, in my opinion. I'm taking Vidal to win this one by late stoppage. However, at the same time, if Vidal goes in there and fights like how we did in his last fight, it's going to be a longer fight than he expected it to, and Garcia could come up with the upset. But for me right now, I'm leaning towards Vidal to win this fight by way of stoppage. What are your thoughts on this fight? Who do you have winning this one? Let me know in the comment section below. If you would like to support the channel, there's a couple ways you can do so. You can like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you would like to support by way of donation, you can find options in the description below. Also, my Cash App handle will be on screen as well. Any amount goes towards the growth of this channel. It will be greatly, greatly appreciated. So with all that being said, if you've been watching the video this long, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel and we'll definitely see you next time.